Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to another mail day video. I've got two pieces of mail today from Belgium. But before I jump into that, I first want to show you some other really fancy stuff that I picked up at Newfest. First of all, if you participated, everybody got this deep water. I love the art. And guess what? Uh, Jeff Mingus was there. And he signed my uh, deep water. So thank you very much, Jeff. He also put here Noobfest 23. So this is just uh, a great memory of the event. And wh while I was there, of course, and Jeff was there, I also picked up some artist proofs. And here we see the art that he made for the Antiquities expansion. And as you can see on the back, they are, oh, let me properly show it to you. They're artist proofs. It was really great to meet Jeff. He's a great guy. Obviously, he was super busy with, with making altars or else I would have asked him to make one for me too. But he was, you know, very, very busy, understandably. And I was a little bit late, you know, as I sometimes do. And I also picked up these. I think they're quite cool. So Dwarven Catapult and Dwarven Lieutenant. So also Mangus Art. And he signed them. It's kind of hard to see, isn't it? But he signed them really cool with a golden pen. Really happy with them. Again, here, artist proof. So these are definitely going to go into my uh, ever-growing Fallen Empires collection. So thank you so much, Jeff. Jeff, I just wanted to point that out. I also met Andy from The Hive. Look at that. He gave me these cool Hive token cards. Really, really sweet. And also, that's something I love. I got a lot of stickers. And let's see, maybe I can show you a few. I got this one. Single ready to mingle with the Sharzad art. Fantastic. I got uh, the Hive sticker and also an X-Files sticker here. So that's pretty sweet. You know, this is just, just so fun. This is one from Urborg. I mean, this whole this whole thing. If I ever play against you, um, I'll probably show you my deck box anyway. Sorry for that in advance. That's typically old school magic, isn't it? You're going to brag about your old school magic stickers. I mean... I'm such a nerd. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue with the goodies. Um, this is something I ordered on um, on Card Market, but I forgot what it is. I think it's foreign black border cards, but I'm not quite sure. So maybe it's not even magic. That would be funny. I've had that before. When I opened something, it wasn't magic related, but I, th I think it's magic. So it's a 20, 250 Belgium radio stations. Okay, that is uh, interesting, whatever. And then we have, yeah, we've got magic cards here in the middle. Okay, okay. We got some. Oh, there's a cool, look at that card. That is a cool card. Okay. Um, that is such a cool card. That's one of the first, like, avatar cards in the game. I love, this is such a cool card. You know what I'm going to do? How can I open this? Oh, yeah. There we go. It's going to start with one card at a time. So this is Personal Incarnation. Uh, six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. And here you can actually see the wizard casting the Personal Incarnation. The cool thing about this card is it's a 6-6. Six, six, and when it takes damage, you as a wizard can take that damage. Uh, which is something I really, really like about this card. The problem with this card is that if it dies, you lose half your life. So if someone plays a terror on this card, you lose half your life. I think if somebody plays the Swords to Plowshares, you don't lose half your life because the card is removed from the game. I believe it has to go to the graveyard, but it is super risky, of course. You know, playing this, I mean, you're, you're a real macho man. You're a man of class and style. I think it's super cool. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever used Personal Incarnation in your deck and um, how you've used it because I want to play with it. And uh, it's actually the art of the card is made uh, by the same artist who made the, the art for Fujurin Enchantress and Dwarven Demolition Team. It's it's pretty cool. It hasn't made that many pictures, uh, art pieces of art, I should say, in the, in the game of Magic. But he made the ones he made have really made an impact. He also made the art for Kelvin Warlord, for example. So I really like like his style. Very very cool. Okay, so that's the first one. So I guess these cards are going to be. Foreign Black Border, I assume. Uh, let's flip the next one. Oh no, this is English. Wall of Vapor from Legends. 
I know why I bought this. Now I remember. I back in the day. No, this was just a week ago, but I forgot. Um, I am collecting the Legends comments and the Arabian Nights comments because I found out that I almost have all of them anyway. And I thought, oh, that's another really neat, fun thing to do and to collect. So, um, yeah. So I ordered the Wall of Vapor. And what else do I have? Hornet Cobra. This this card is so funny. Three mana for a 2-2 two, two first, or 2-1 first strike. Because you also have a land leeches from the dark, which is three mana for a 2-2 two, two first strike. So it's just better, you know. Funny. It's so funny. So maybe they thought, oh, Hornet Cobra doesn't see a lot of play. So we're going to make a 2-2 two, two in the dark. That is better than this card. So Hornet Cobra. And then the last one. Oh, two more. We've got Dirkwood Boris. One green and four for a four four vanilla. This, I mean, this card, it's playable, right? I mean, you can, you can kind of make it work, right? And we have a giant slug. Giant slug is so funny. It's a card from a legend, so one one. It's two mana, and it's got this ridiculous ability. I'm just gonna read it to you. Five mana during controller's next upkeep. Giant slug gains landwalk ability of controller's choice until end of turn. The type of land walk chosen must correspond with one of the five basic land types. So you cannot say a legendary land walk because I know there's a legend who has that ability. But you cannot give the giant slug that. But you can give it any land walk ability you want and only for five mana. And I mean, it's a giant slug and it's only a one one. I mean, look at the art. It's pretty cool. You've got this little soldier dude trying to zoom in properly. His little soldier dude is being eaten by the giant slug. I assume a soldier is a 1-1. I mean, it's got a sword and everything, right? So why is the giant slug only a 1-1? I think the giant slug should at least be a 2-2. Also think of spitting slug. Spitting slug is a 2-4. I mean, come on, people. I think giant slug should have been at least a 2-2 or maybe a 1-3 or something. 1-3 would make sense, right? Because it's a slug. you got like a house. Although maybe this is like one of those snails that's like a nude snail that doesn't have a house. Anyway, I feel like 1-1 one, one is, it should be bigger. Let me know in the comments below if you agree. Should we make Giant Slug bigger? I think we should. Um, anyway, so four new comments for my common collection, all from Legends. And then I have this one. This is an envelope um, from Petra. And Petra has sent more things to the channel. Um, I have no idea what's in here. So this is unexpected. So already in advance, in advance, thank you, Petra, for sending me a letter. Let's have a look. Let's see what's in here. There we go. It is pink. And here we go. Hi, Thomas. Ah, your knowledge of mechanics of the foreign basic sets is... Very good. Well, thank you. But what about your knowledge of the Foreign Legends set? Regards, Petra. Uh, ooh, I know this one. This is uh, uh, Hag. Brian Hag. No, Hag. Hag. Uh, Hag Witch. Wait, let me first get the card. Let me first get the card. How can we open this? Got to be tough here. I'm gonna show you. I gotta be tough. Sorry, baby. I gotta be tough. Okay. I think this card, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show the original card in the editing, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain what it does. And maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, love. I love the coloring of foreign black border. By the way, it's it's really nice. Look at this. So this is Hag something. I think it's a witch. I love the art. I love the boat on the background. This is the pirate ship, right? Um, what it does is when it dies, all creatures that have been blocked by the Hag turn into O2 creatures and for the rest of the game. So they they're just turn into O2 creatures, which is really interesting. So if you would put a lure on here and just attack and maybe use a maze of if, you know, to take, get it back before damage is dealt. No, because then it doesn't die, it has to die. Anyway, put a lure on it, attack, turn all your creatures into O2s, and then yeah, you do lose the hag and the lure, but yeah, your opponent is stuck with a bunch of O2 vanilla creatures, which is pretty cool. 
But I think that's what it does. But I'm going to show the actual card here, and then we'll just have to wait and see. I like this game. It's cool. So Estrega del Mare. Let's, let's check out the next one. Erosion. Yeah, I know Erosion. So that's three blue. Enchant Land, or Terrain, as it's here. Um, in French, I guess. Yeah, this is French. Um, the land is destroyed unless the opponent pays one mana or takes one damage. Une point de vie. Is that one, dam one life point? V is life. I think that's what it does. You can pay one mana to cancel the effect or you can pay a life to cancel the effect. If you don't, then erosion like destroys the, the land. I think... I, I wish that Erosion would be at least two blue instead of three blue. Um, or maybe it would say, you know, pay one or the land is destroyed that you kind of, you know, have that option. That would make it better. You know, that would make it, I mean, still a sinkhole is better, an ice storm is better, but it would make it at least kind of playable. I have a, let, let me know in the comments, what, what would, uh, what change could they make to make Erosion somewhat playable? This kind of looks like a face, by the look. Look at it. This is the mouth, the nose is pointing up. There are the eyes. Pretty cool. Erosion. Um, energy tap. One blue. Instant, I think. Um, tap target creature, and you get mana equal to the casting cost of the creature, right? And then you can add that to your mana pool, I think. So if you would tap a Colossus of Sardia, with this energy tap, you would get nine colorless mana, I think. That you can then use to untap the Colossus again. <laughs> oh no, you can only do that in your upkeep, right? Anyway, uh, that's what it does, energy tap. And then we go, oh, this is the, the, the something something mantle. This art is really cool. Okay, I'm just gonna take it out of the uh, sleeve to show you the art. Look at this. This is stunning art. This card, I believe, has not been reprinted. Um, it's an enchant creature, right? And you can turn the creature into, during your upkeep, into any color that you want. So you can change that multiple times. Is that what it does? Let's see if we can figure it out reading the text. Oh, God, no, I, this is not helping. Altro colore, so change the color. Yeah, I think I think you can you can choose uh, the color, perhaps by tapping the creature down or something, and it changes color. So this is quite a unique card because you you don't. It's not like you cast it and then you change the color, like with a death lace, for example. No, with this card, you you can you can do it multiple times, I think, but I'm not sure when. But very cool card, beautiful art. One of those cards you kind of want to brew brew around, right? You're like this should be useful somehow. Um, and then I've got the last card, the last one. I'm also going to take it out of the out of the sleeve. Boom! Oh, the Leviathan. Yes, yeah, Segovian Leviathan. I know this. Five mana for a 3-3 three, three land walk, or as they say in Italy, Passa i sole. Right? Um, people have asked me uh, before, like, why is it only a 3-3? Three, three? If you see the whales that are super small, why is the Leviathan only a 3-3 creature, shouldn't it be, it's a Leviathan, shouldn't be a 10-10. Well, actually, Segovia, which is where this Leviathan lives, is a tiny plains. So if I would go to Segovia as a human, my food would be as big as this Leviathan. Would it be? Or, no, no, let me, let me say it differently. My food would be as big as, I, I guess, the fin of the whale. You know, so it's... It's this tiny plane where everything is tiny. So a giant uh, Leviathan on Segovia is in a normal plane, it's just a 3-3, but in Segovia, it's probably like a 20-20. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, to explain it here. I'm not doing a great job, but I'm you know, doing my best, bear with me. Um, anyway, thank you so much, Pedro, for these cards. It's just a lot of fun to guess what these cards do. And I just wanna finish here by looking one more time on this piece of art. Absolutely stunning. So thank you for uh, watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. What shall we do with the drunken? Say the what shall we do with the drunken?
Ik het is fijn dat je zomaar kan zien.